Las Vegas was not especially impressed. You take a quick look here uh, at the odds, and uh, they suggest that in our big number this morning from Caesars that before they got Jamal Adams, the Seahawks were 12 to 1 to win the whole thing, and after getting Jamal Adams, they're 12 to 1 to win the whole thing. So no change whatsoever in the odds. Meanwhile, a big change, I think, for both of these teams. Until let's dive into it here again. The football squad is ready. Shefty, Dan Orlovsky, Lewis Riddick. Shefty, I start with you. This was a yeah. very big trade. Take us through how it ultimately finally did happen. Greeny, you heard Joe Douglas there reference the fact that his conversations with the Seahawks general manager, John Schneider, had been going on for, quote-unquote, several weeks. And my understanding is the framework of the deal was in place well before Jamal Adams criticized Adam Gase in Friday's New York Daily News. This deal was in place and was essentially riding along a parallel track as the talks between the NFL and the NFLPA on what a new financial deal would look like. Seattle wanted to see what those final numbers would be and what the salary cap would be in 2021, which we now know will be a floor of $175 million. And once the Seahawks got the official word on those numbers and where the cap would come in in 2021, and that was on Friday night, Joe Douglas and John Schneider spent Saturday finalizing the deal that they had had in place days before that would send those two first-round picks and a third-round pick to the New York Jets in exchange for the young Pro Bowl safety who Seattle still has to sign to a long-term extension but isn't close on a deal right now and very likely will not have a deal done at any point this season. So there's so any point this season. All right, that's interesting. There's so much to unpack here. Let's take it from both sides' perspective. Dan, I want to start with the Seahawks' side of this. We just saw Vegas didn't change their Super Bowl odds at all. In your view, how much better is Seattle now than it was a week ago? In your mind, does it make them Super Bowl contenders? It absolutely makes them Super Bowl contenders, Greeny. They were beforehand. we got to remember, this team was one yard away last year from the number one seed in the NFC. That, one, that, that play on the one-yard line against San Francisco flipped the seeding. So they were a, a deep playoff contender beforehand, but they are now an absolute Super Bowl contender, and they've gotten closer to San Francisco, Tampa Bay, and New Orleans. So that's a big deal for them. Everyone is – I've heard a lot of people say, well, Jamal Adams is just a safety, and they've kind of referenced it to the Chicago Bears getting Khalil Mack as, you know, a really good defensive player. And they're, they're, that's fair. The difference between the Bears acquiring Khalil Mack and the Seahawks acquiring Jamal, Jamal Adams is the quarterback. And one of them has an absolute bona fide superstar quarterback. So this makes – the Seattle Seahawks defense exponentially better. And I'll just put it to the football aspect and bring it to the field. If you look at their division and see the impact Jamal Adams will make on the field, one of the reasons San Francisco is so difficult to stop is because you don't have people to match up against George Kittle, both in the run game and the pass game. Jamal Adams can do that. One of the reasons why Arizona's offense is so difficult to stop is because the amount of spread and space they make defenders play in. Well, as a safety, Jamal Adams can play in space, both in the run and the pass game. And then if you look at the Rams, what makes them so difficult to defend is the way they go in and out of personnel. 11 personnel with three wide receivers to 12 personnel with two tight ends. You better have a safety that is very comfortable in playing all of those different roles. Jamal Adams can do that. And so that's why this is much bigger than just a safety move. And that's why now it is really, I look at four teams in the NFC. I really do. I look at San Francisco, New Orleans, Tampa Bay, and I totally believe that Seattle is now vaulted into that top. And then, Lewis, you and I were together here Friday morning when this story first broke, when the, the original Jamal Adams quote in the New York Daily News came up, and we talked about it then. And if you had told me at that moment, and, and it's no secret that I'm a fan of the Jets, Lewis, that they would wind up getting two number ones for him, I would have said that's doing awfully well. So as you sit back and analyze the trade from the standpoint of a person who, do, who deals in that, what do you think of the trade from both sides, how it materialized and uh, winners and losers, if, if that is the right way to look at it? Sure. Look, I think everybody always is optimistic when you when you wind up tallying up the fact that, you know, your team gets two number ones and a number three because people love they love the idea of hope. They love the idea of down the road, down the road, down the road. We could be much better. We could, we're playing the long game. We're set up for success down the road and in the future here. And in the Jets' case, I mean, that's obviously what the fan base is really right now 
sinking their teeth into. And that's something that obviously Joe Douglas is selling to not only to the rest of the team and the rest of the organization, but to the fan base as well. The only problem is, look, draft picks and, uh, and having that kind of ammo is great, but you also need to develop and utilize the players that you acquire. And first and foremost, you have to acquire the right players for whatever system you're going to run. If you're telling me, you know, you know, if you're asking me to bet money on the fact that Adam Gase and that program is the right program with which to use utilize all these assets, well, I'm not going to put any money on that. I'm, I'm going to wait and see on this one. As far as the Seahawks are concerned, look, I understand it's a hefty price to pay, but Seattle has a history of putting a lot of money salary cap wise into their secondary, and they've had a lot of success with it back in you know 2012, 2013, 2014, when really a lot of money was invested in Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas, and Pete Carroll has a has an as a formula for how he likes to use safeties. They obviously see the same thing here in Jamal Adams. They feel as though he really strengthens this football team down the middle because of his scheme versatility. He really does allow them to do a lot of things that maybe they're not able to do with a guy like Bradley McDougal. But the price is hefty. But if Seattle wins next year and they win a Super Bowl, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a Super Bowl, and, you know, another trophy in your trophy case, or would you rather be in the business of always selling hope and kicking the can down the road saying, well, we're going to be better eventually? That's really what you're dealing with right now. So which one do you want? Do you want Super Bowls or do you want hope? Yeah, it's an easy question to answer. Uh, to me, I think it could wind up being the classic trade that helps both teams. We'll wait and we'll see. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.